Hi, this is Claire Pretzia from Verity Papery, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use dyes to create focal backgrounds. We have two cards here, a traditional themed card and a more non-traditional themed card. So let's get started. Alright, so we'll start with the more traditional themed uh, card base first. I'm using some craft card stock from Hero Arts, and I'm adhering a panel to an already pre-scored and pre-folded card base. This card base I made from some Michaels cardstock. It's 120 pound. It's really heavyweight. I like my card bases to be really heavyweight, so that's why I usually, um, with most pattern papers and other layering papers out there, I cut a panel out and then adhere it to a card base just because I'm, I don't know, it's one of my things about cards. I really want my card bases to be nice and heavy. Anyway, for the second card front, I am using some clear sparkle embossing powder to give the background a little more interest. So I just cover the background with Versamark ink to get that stickiness and then cover it with the powder and heat emboss it. The reason I don't adhere this card front directly to the card base like I did with the craft is because when you add the heat it's going to kind of warp that cardstock. So I don't want my card base to be warped as well. So that's why I do my front first. You can see it's kind of curled there. And then I adhere it to my card base and everything is nice and straight. So the same thing applies when you're doing water watercoloring. If you're covering like a large uh, panel of cardstock, like with this um, heat embossing here, the cardstock is usually going to warp even if you have nice high quality watercolor cardstock. So that's why I usually have the panel cut, uh, the front panel cut, and then I adhere that to a card base. So for the front of the purple card, I'm taking a piece of watercolor cardstock and I'm going to cut a diamond pattern. So, first I want to point out that these dies are from the November My Monthly Hero Kit. So it's a limited edition kit, but you can apply the same technique using different dies. But these dies are triangle dies and they have their three points. And the I'm going to call it the top point. There's one point on the die that's more rounded and smooth. I'm going to call that the top of the triangle and then the bottom of the triangles, the two pointier ends. So I'm going to meet the bottoms of two triangles together to create a diamond and keep that in place with a piece of washi tape. And then I'm going to draw a line lightly with a pencil onto the watercolor cardstock. And this is going to be my guide for the second diamond that I die cut. I'm just using a piece of cardstock to draw my lines, just something with a straight edge. I don't like measuring things, um, so that's why I didn't measure it. So I'm making sure that the middle of that diamond where the bottoms of those two triangles meet, that's where the line is that I do with the pencil. Now for my second diamond, this is how I get away with not measuring anything but actually keeping things quasi even. So um, I switched up the pattern of diamonds there and I adhered that or kept those two triangles in place with a piece of washi tape and I'm meeting that diamond with a triangle from the snowflake. I'm meeting the tips right there. And that makes, that's kind of my guide or my standard for how far or close I want the diamonds to be apart. So as long as I follow that for my two diamonds that will be on the left side of this card, then that will create everything that will give it the look of everything being equidistant without actually having to measure anything. If you want to measure things, then <laughs> by all means go for it. But like I said, I try to avoid measuring stuff because I find I go to all the trouble of measuring something and then it's off anyway, so I just don't bother with it. All right, so I made that one diamond. I'm creating another diamond and you'll see I'm just meeting those points together again and that will create the background. So I adhered my background to the purple cardstock and I'm topping it off with some pearls and that will pretty much create most of that card. We'll finish the sentiments off at the very end. And now for the second card. So now I'm actually using a ruler just because it was easy. <laughs> and I just drew a line and I'm going to create a kind of, I guess, a stripe, triangle stripe. Um, I'm going to place the bottoms of the triangles on that line and I'm going to stick the one triangle in the center there. Before I remove it, I'm going to draw another line and that line on top, that's going to be my guide 
for when I create the second stripe of triangles and also kind of guide those last two triangles that I had to die cut on the side. So I'm coming in again right here. I'm going to place that one diamond in place just to make sure everything's equidistant. And that's pretty much how I create the pattern for these cards. I don't measure anything. I just kind of use the dies themselves as guides for where everything needs to go. So I'm good in, going to admit that this card panel was a little tricky to adhere. Um, it took me probably five minutes to cut all the foam adhesive skinny enough to fit in there. But um, if you didn't want to go to all that trouble, you could just use spray adhesive. I mean, you won't have the dimension, obviously, from the dimensional adhesive, but it would be a lot quicker. So I'm kind of a strange person when it comes to card making. I realize that I'm too lazy to actually measure anything, but then I will actually go to the trouble of cutting super skinny little strips of dimensional adhesive. I don't know. Anyway, um, for the sentiments, this sentiment is from an add-on stamp set from uh, this release. So it will still be available um, even after the monthly kit sells out. Going to heat emboss that in white, die cut it using the banner die that comes with the uh, stamp set because it's a stamp and die combo and just adhere those to the cards and that finishes it off. So like I mentioned before, the triangle dies that I use in this video are actually part of the limited edition monthly kit, but you can still use the same principles, I guess, to create your own die cut backgrounds and kind of use the dies themselves as your guides if you're lazy like me and you don't actually want to measure anything. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, then you can leave them on the blog, you can leave them on the video. I tried to talk slower this video, but I don't know if I actually did. In any case, I hope things made sense. And supplies will be listed on the blog and on the video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. God bless. Bye.